Colleagues, for months, the United States has tirelessly pushed toward a goal that all of us should aspire to, a sustainable resolution of the Gaza conflict so that Israelis and Palestinians can live side by side and enjoy equal measures of security, dignity, and freedom. To build towards that future, the United States is working on a hostage deal between Israel and Hamas, along with Egypt and Qatar. This hostage deal would bring an immediate and sustained period of calm to Gaza for at least six weeks. And from there, we could take the time to build a more enduring peace. President Biden has had multiple calls in recent days with Prime Minister Netanyahu, as well as the leaders of Egypt and Qatar to push this deal forward. And though gaps remain, the key elements are on the table so that if an arrangement is reached, it would help create the conditions for sustainable cessation of hostilities, which I know all of us would like to see. Of course, we want this deal to happen as soon as possible, as is shown by our exhaustive efforts. But sometimes hard diplomacy takes more time than any of us might like. Believe me, I understand the desire for the Council to act urgently, to positively shape the situation in line with the Security Council's mandate. Still, that desire cannot blind us to the reality of the situation on the ground. It, and it cannot come at the expense of undermining the only, and let me repeat, the only path available toward a longer, durable peace. And that is why you've heard me say over and over again, any action this council takes right now should help, not hinder these sensitive and ongoing negotiations. And we believe that the resolution on the table right now would in fact negatively impact those negotiations. Demanding an immediate, unconditional ceasefire without an agreement requiring Hamas to release the hostages will not bring about a durable peace. Instead, it could extend the fighting between Hamas and Israel, extend the hostages' time in captivity, an experience described by former hostages as hell, and extend the dire humanitarian crisis Palestinians are facing in Gaza. None of us want that. And so I reiterate the United States' belief that while numerous parties engage in sensitive negotiations, this is not the time for this resolution, which jeopardizes these efforts. Colleagues, I communicated our concerns publicly and privately over the last several weeks. We've submitted numerous rounds of edits. All were ignored. And so for that reason, the United States has offered an alternative resolution that would do what this text does not pressure Hamas to take the hostage deal that is on the table and help secure a pause that allows humanitarian assistance to reach Palestinian civilians in desperate need. Again, there's much more we all agree on, and the alternative resolution put forward by the United States is rooted in those shared beliefs. To start, in line with President Biden's comments last week, our text calls for a temporary ceasefire in Gaza as soon as practicable, based on the formula of all hostages being released. Last I checked, no one here opposes this. A majority of us also agree that it's time for this council to condemn Hamas. We know because you provided that feedback to Russia on its PRST and to Algeria on its resolution, a feedback that was inexplicably ignored. Should the U.S. resolution be adopted, it would be the first to condemn Hamas for the abhorrent attacks of October 7th, including the sexual violence documented that day. The U.S. text also makes clear that Hamas has no place in future governance of Gaza, nor does Hamas represent the dignity or self-determination of the Palestinian people. Again, all things I believe we agree on. 
In addition, our draft states there can be no reduction of territory in the Gaza Strip and rejects, <gasps> as we have before in Resolution 2720, any forced displacements of civilians in Gaza. It also highlights the concerns many council members have regarding the fate of civilians in Rafah, making clear that under current circumstances, a major ground offensive into Rafah should not proceed. Colleagues, this is not, as some members have claimed, an American effort to cover for an imminent ground incursion. Rather, it is a sincere statement of our concern for the 1.5 million civilians who've sought refuge in Rafa. Civilians must be protected and have access to humanitarian assistance and basic services. On that note, our text outlines a path for implementation of Resolution 27 2012, uh, 2712 and 2720, including provisions that call for the expansion of aid at scale. It also further clarifies and strengthens the mandate of the Senior Humanitarian and Reconstruction Coordinator for Gaza, Ziggurat Cog, whose plan I know we all support. As in previous resolutions, it places an emphasis on the protection of civilians and humanitarian workers, and it calls for lifting all barriers to the provision of humanitarian assistance, opening additional humanitarian routes, and keeping current border crossings open. Our draft also aims to support the Secretary General's effort to investigate those UNRWA personnel who directly participated in October 7th, and it supports the work of the independent review group led by Catherine Colonna, focused on ensuring UNRWA's neutrality. These and other steps are necessary to restore donor confidence. Finally, and as always, the draft reiterates our unwavering commitment to the vision of the two-state solution, where two democratic states, Israel and Palestine, live side by side in peace within secure and recognized borders under a revamped and revitalized Palestinian authority. Colleagues, this resolution reflects the many ideas that have been shared over the past month, but which are not reflected in the text before us today. And we believe it will both support the ongoing negotiations and lay the groundwork for a sustainable peace in the region. But in addition to getting the what of this text correct, we also know it's critical to get the how and when of it right too. We will work in earnest in negotiating this text and indeed intend to leave time for everyone to comment rather than impose an arbitrary deadline for the vote. Colleagues, we're at a pivotal moment and a critical one critical for the hostages who've been held captive for nearly 20 weeks in Gaza, and critical for their families who are desperate to be reunited with their loved ones. Critical for Palestinians whose homes and families have been destroyed and who now wonder where they'll find their next meal. Critical for Israelis, many of whom are still displaced or face barrages of rocket fire critical for Palestinian civilians in the West Bank who are at heightened risk of extremist settler violence, critical for humanitarian workers and journalists who put their lives on the line every day to do their jobs, and critical to everyone who desperately want to see sustainable peace in this region. That includes, I believe, every single person in this room. And so let us commit to doing this the right way and at the right time so that we can create the right conditions for a safer, more peaceful future. Thank you, Madam President.